What's up everybody? Today I'm gonna to be giving you a tour of the desk setup that I have behind me that I use as a full-time trader in the stock market. If you're new here, my name is Greg and I usually make videos about popular stocks and options trading strategies. But today we're gonna to take a little break from that. I'm gonna be showing you everything from the computer that's running this rig to the peripherals and even this big ass monitor right behind me. Before we get into the meat of this video though, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel. That way you can keep up to date with my latest videos. Starting with the heart of the setup, the computer that's running this whole rig is a 2018 13 inch MacBook Pro. Now I know I'm gonna catch a lot of flack from all the PC fanboys out there because I don't have 256 gigabytes of RAM, 500 terabytes of storage, and a GTX 5000, but this computer suits my needs. I bought this back in college when I didn't need a ton of power and the spec sheet reads like this. I have an eighth gen i5 quad core processor running at 2.3 gigahertz, 256 gigabytes of SSD storage, and only eight gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. Now these specs definitely aren't the top of the line because this is the base model with touch bar from 2018. In terms of usability for my MacBook, it definitely gets the job done, maybe not as quickly as I'd like it to, but overall as a laptop, I generally would recommend it. The issues that I have with this computer are mainly due to the small amount of RAM that I have with only eight gigabytes. So I definitely would recommend going with 16 gigabytes for your own trading rig. Since Thinkorswim back here is a very memory intensive application with all the symbols, numbers, and charts that it's displaying, you're gonna need more RAM in order to run the application. If I'm doing a little too much with a Thinkorswim app and I have six different stocks up and I'm starting to make some drawings on the charts, then my Thinkorswim app typically crashes. And the RAM on a new MacBook is non-upgradable, so I'm definitely looking to make an upgrade either to the 14-inch MacBook Pro or building my own PC with higher-end specs. Another issue that you might run into whenever you get one of the new MacBooks is having to buy a USB-C dongle. Personally, I ended up going with the Pergo USB-C hub because it has all the ports that I could possibly need. And it integrates perfectly considering that it's space gray along with my MacBook. The Pergo USB-C hub has an HDMI port in the back, a Thunderbolt 3 port, which I use to charge my MacBook, a USB-C port, which I still haven't found a use for, a micro and regular SD card reader, and then two USB 3.0 ports. Connected to my USB ports, I have my mouse and my keyboard. The keyboard that I use is a Logitech G910, which is a gaming keyboard since I used to be a gamer myself, but then I started taking life way too seriously and started playing the stock market instead. Honestly, I never really found a use for all the programmable G buttons, but it does light up and everybody loves RGB. This also has media keys to skip a song, go back, pause, play, and you can also use the volume knob in order to control how loud your speakers are. And honestly, the main part that I like about this keyboard is that it has a full numpad which means that I can make my quick math even quicker. Now this keyboard is a behemoth and it takes up about 25% of my entire desk. So do keep that in mind before you go out and buy a Logitech G910. Next to my keyboard, the size of Russia, the mouse that I'm using is a Logitech G502. This is another gaming piece. It's definitely not very specific to my own needs, but it does have an adjustable DPI, which means that I can get to the buy button just a millisecond quicker. Honestly, my favorite feature of this mouse has to be the infinite scroll wheel because it's fun as hell to play with and sometimes I have to scroll through a whole lot of comments. But again, it's not optimal for my own use. I'm looking to make the switch over to the Logitech MX Master and cutting the cord with a Bluetooth mouse. Since I'm not really into gaming anymore, I don't need to make that quick scope kill and I can afford a little more latency. The Logitech MX Master would also help me with video editing since it has a side scroll feature. Beneath my mouse, I recently purchased a large desk pad in order to keep it from scratching and also to protect from coffee stains stemming from my addiction to caffeine. No, really, I have a problem. This is a generic desk map from Amazon, probably from a Chinese retailer, and everything that's in this video is gonna be linked down in the description below. This desk map ended up costing me $16.99, and well, like the rest of the setup, the catchphrase of this video, it gets the job done. Behind this massive desk mat, I have a standing charger from Anchor, which I would consider to be one of the best companies whenever it comes to charging accessories. This helps me ensure that I can keep my iPhone charged while still being able to look at it and make trades since a web application for Robinhood is constantly down. 
Above my charger, I have probably the most functional part of this entire setup and likely what you came here for, the 29 inch ultra wide behind me. This is a 29 inch ultra wide IPS monitor with FreeSync from LG. This bad boy makes it easy to have six different stocks up at one time. And it also makes editing an iMovie a whole lot easier since I don't have to side scroll as much. I bought this monitor a few years back, probably around $260, but the price of this has gone down since then. And right now it's going for just $230. This definitely doesn't have the fastest refresh rate at just 75 hertz. It's not the best quality at 1080p instead of 1440, but it looks pretty good and it gets the job done. And it gets the job done. And it gets the job done. Holding up my ultra wide monitor, I have a Vivo single monitor and laptop desk mount combo in black, which you'll need to drill a giant hole through your desk in order to install. This gives me a pretty dope dual monitor setup so I can watch all these stocks while also keeping up with my Discord. Did I mention that I had a Discord? Well, yeah, it's a trading group with over 400 members where I post all of my trades and all of the stocks that I'm watching. You can get some free information and maybe make a friend. Who knows? Back to my setup. In terms of sound, I have cheap generic $12 speakers from Logitech, which I rarely use anyway, but at least they're there whenever I need them, unlike Robinhood. I mostly use these yellow beats that I got from my wife and she got them for free for buying an iPad Pro. These Beats Solo 3 are pretty good, I guess. I'm not really an audiophile per se, but they're really helpful in blocking out the noise from all the construction that's going around me if I put some earplugs underneath them. Life hack, if you don't have noise canceling headphones, you can just put these earplugs in underneath your over ear headphones. Definitely wouldn't recommend this with in-ear headphones because you might end up getting them stuck in your ear. Underneath everything that's in my setup, I have probably the cheapest desk that you can buy from Ikea, which is the 39 inch by 23 inch Linmon table on top of some Adil's legs. I think that in store, this desk cost me a whopping $20. If we add everything up, my MacBook cost me $1,799. The USB-C adapter ran me $34. My keyboard cost me $100. The mouse cost me $49. And my desk mat came in at $17. My monitor was $229 as I stated earlier, and the mount cost me $60. The cheap speakers that I bought were 12, and my Beats again were completely free. So the total for this setup is $2,300, with the majority of it being spent on the MacBook. This was again $1,799, which means that this entire setup, minus that MacBook, cost me $501. As I said earlier, I am planning to make a few changes to this, and maybe even adding a USB-C mic in order to live stream my trading sessions. Let me know if you're interested in seeing me trade live down in the comments below. So that wraps up my tour on my budget trading setup. Thanks for tuning in. And as always, remember to stay positive, stay green. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye guys.